Oh my goodness, it is time, everybody. Jump Festa has arrived. And, uh, you know, it's a lot. There's a lot here, a lot of announcements, a lot of reveals, a lot of trailers. And while everything kind of looks nice and fancy, I am kind of the bearer of bad news. I am the skeptical one that's going to sit here and be very negative about it. So, yippee. To be fair, though, I'm excited. Some of this stuff looks really good. I'm really happy for it. And that, of course, is being positive. But when it comes to me being being skeptical when it comes to the industry, when it comes to spreading talent incredibly thin, I'm always worried. Chainsaw Man is getting a movie. A lot of people kind of expected this. Not necessarily here though, but I guess it kind of makes sense. The Razor Arc feels like it could be just a complete functioning full-fledged movie. And then I guess you would kind of roll into the second season to finish off part one. So Reze movie arc sounds really good. They released some visuals for it. They released a nice pretty poster of Reze. It's looking different. At least the animation. It's pre-animated, of course. So there's a lot of change and things that can be changed when it comes to actual movie quality. Stylistically, it's looking a little bit flatter and a little bit different compared to the first season. Is the same people that are working on the first season working on the movie? We don't no, but there is a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, I should say, with clarity, that the teams have been changed. That potentially, Nakayama, that was the director of season one, is no longer here. Before you bury Nakayama with your own personal thoughts, like, yippee, finally we can get something colourful and crazy and chaotic, let me just ground you a little bit. As much as I am excited for this movie, and I do wish them the best, the time, the talent, everything they can get to really cook for this, I'm worried that they're spread incredibly thin. Studio Mapper has a lot of talent underneath them, and this talent has been getting more and more vocal, and rightfully so, with how horrible the production of a lot of these anime are. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, phenomenal, beautiful, some incredible episodes, arguably anime of the year, yet the production has been horrendous. But you know what? They also announced Hell's Paradise Season 2. So just to build a bit of a timeline for you, MAPPA has different teams and different parts of their studio working on different things, but all of them that we know of are filled to the brim and are completely burnt out just by how pushed to the limit they truly are. Attack on Titan just got finished. They worked so incredibly hard on that and they've done a phenomenal job. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has been in the gutter for quite some time, yet they're working so tirelessly to bring that to life and there's so much incredible generational talent on that team so they're making it work within the worst conditions possible hell's paradise season one didn't really get good reception and honestly it felt like it just got pushed to the side no one really cared about it and now they're announcing a second season so they're going to start working on that and now they're going to start working on a full-fledged movie now to go even further and we don't know how true some of this is so take it with a grain of salt mapper is fully funding and producing the Reze Arc movie. That means that they're potentially taking no investors, no outside money, no sponsorships or, you know, big corporations breathing down on their neck. It's a little bit more nerve wracking. This is a full movie, something that's going to be potentially fully funded by Mapper alone. Movies aren't cheap. They're very expensive to make. Partially the marketing alone is incredibly expensive. So you're talking about streaming, you're talking about putting it into movie cinemas, you're talking about potential merchandise for the film, you're talking about all the talent that has to go into it, the time that it has to take to build it. It's not an easy task. This is not something that a lot of studios can do successfully unless they already have, here's the kicker, the pre-backing for it. So either big corporations partially funding it or the fan base is big enough to carry it to stardom. Now you probably think, well, Chainsaw Man's got a huge fan base. Incredibly excited. You're not wrong, but is it enough? Season 1 didn't really have the best reception. A lot of people really like it, but on the same side, a lot of people really didn't. Now you're going straight into a movie. For comparison, and a kind of weird one, Attack on Titan spent three seasons, I believe, four seasons even, building up its legacy, its fandom that was so excited to experience it, only to make a movie for the ending. So you had a pretty big backing, whether people liked it or not, going into that final arc, that final movie. 
What I'm trying to say, are anime onlys invested enough to watch the film? If it's going to be fully funded by MAPPA, have anime onlys had enough time to fall in love with this story to go watch it in cinema? I do not know, but I have my fingers crossed for the staff, for the talent, for the people that are going to be working on it. I wish them the best, I wish them a healthy life, and I'm curious to see what the final product is going to be. I'm sure it's going to be a fun time, a great time, it's most likely going to be a little bit different to what season 1 was. Can they hit the nail on the head? Can they do the Reze arc justice? Now right here, you are looking at One Piece. Sorry, THE One Piece. And if you're asking yourself, what is this? This is a One Piece anime remake. Yeah, it's true. The One Piece is getting an anime remake by none other than Wit Studio and Netflix. This is going to be covering the East Blue arc. And while I'm kind of interested and a little bit excited to see what it looks like and how it works in motion, I'm also asking myself, why? <laughs> like, why is this a thing? Look, I don't mean to be negative, so don't kill me, but why bother with a remake? Personally, I find that the beginning of One Piece has really weird pacing in a lot of positions. Perfectly fine, pretty old, but it also has a bit of charm. Like, I get people really love the new stuff and the different art directions that go into those episodes. You know, that's all good. For me, the early opening of One Piece, as dated and old as it looks, has this kind of appealing charm to it that feels kind of lovely. It feels like a, a timely piece that you can kind of gracefully see the progression of its anime production over the years. It's ran for a thousand plus episodes. It's kind of like one of the many few, rare few shows that have actually done it. So you get to see it, the 90s or early 2000s, all the way to 2023 and onwards. Now admittedly, a lot of that production has been pretty shaky. A lot of it has been filled with filler and movies, etc, etc, and the direction now is very director based and has a lot of different vision to where it was, you know, 20 years ago. That's perfectly okay. Now for Wit to come in here and do a remake feels interesting and the direction behind it makes sense on paper for new generations that want to get into One Piece, but you kind of run into the exact same problem. How much of One Piece is Wit willing to remake? Now let's say they do the East Blue stuff, right? However long that takes. You then have to go back and watch the old One Piece anyway. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? But then you might bring up the question, well maybe Wit wants to do all the way up to where it starts to get a little bit more modernized for Toei's One Piece, the old one. I'm like, okay, how long would that actually take? Not only does One Piece have a crazy legacy behind it, but you have to do a good enough job that you don't turn off people, that's early One Piece, and you're kind of locked in and committed to a lot of animation. I think it's going to look pretty. I think it's going to look great, undoubtedly. I wish them the best of luck. I'm still curious on why Wit Studio is doing it, but by all means, they'll make it look pretty and they'll make it look great. Just what's the goal for this? What's the long term? I mentioned before Hell's Paradise Season 2. I didn't watch the first season. I, I, I thought it was kind of eh, like it was a bit rough. I'm curious to see what they do for second season, but it seems very quick. So I don't really have all too much faith in it. So if you're excited for it, please do let me know how you felt about the first season. Dana Dan got a new anime trailer looking very pretty. A lot of people are skeptical about the voice acting. Personally, I don't really have a problem with it. You're hearing a small, slight portion that is completely out of context. I think when you hear it in motion, it's gonna sound better. So I just wait for that. Mission Yozakura Family finally got an anime trailer. A lot of people have been waiting many years for this. Um, it looks good. I personally haven't read Mission Yozakura, but I've heard great things about it. So I think people are gonna be happy about this. The Elusive Samurai got an anime key visual, but not a trailer, a little bit odd, but it's done by Cloverworks. So I'm kind of interested to see how they do with this. Where's Sakamoto Days? Hmm? <laughs> like that was the one thing people were kind of begging for for so many years like Sakamoto Days is like prime anime experience where is it? What's going on? Now the last thing, Kaiju number 8. I am very excited for this. This is the earliest anime that we're getting next year. It comes out in April, I believe. And they released a new trailer. It looks incredibly good. The voice acting, the animation, the kaijus, which is what a lot of people were nervous about. Mwah, brilliant. Mostly because it is done by two studios, Production IG and Kara. Anything with kaiju in it, I believe Kara are the people you go to. So you have professionals. You have incredible talent. Working working on Kaiju number 8 and yet I still see people say that they're not too sure on it. Everything on this team so far has screamed passion, industry leading and creativity. But just because the character designs don't look like the manga characters, they look a little bit weird, people have just thrown it to the side. 
Hands down, I think this will be a massive hit next year. You're in for a great time, even if it is just monster fighting. Now the weird thing about it is that it's going to stream on Twitter worldwide. I don't know what that means. Like the whole episode is going to be streamed on Twitter. Is this what we're doing now? Uh, whatever. The last thing for it, however, is getting a spin-off manga. It's telling the story of like various defense force members on the front line. I'm actually kind of excited for this because there's two ways they could do it. Defense force members don't have any powers, just guns, military people. And a lot of people really wanted Kind's number eight story to kind of be that. At least with Kafka and the cleanup crew, you kind of get that with defense force members if they don't have like suits or powers etc if they do i wonder if it could be the main cast or just other people with different abilities i think the more they expand among kaiju number eight's universe just kind of picks up its momentum a lot of people are going to be reading it and i'm excited for it now look at me turning into a news channel that's all i got let me know your thoughts and i'll see you all later